talking yeah. about. Yeah. Okay, we're we're back. Oh, on. forget that. That's not important. All right. No, we're at Higgins Lake. Yeah. Oh. We're okay. back to Higgins Lake. Uh, Your mother and dad bought a, an empty right, lot. Right. We bought a fifty-foot empty lot, and uh, uh, the boys, my brother and and dad, built a little cottage there. So we that was a family cottage, and we spent most of our summers uh, there. Did your everybody just move out there for the summer? Oh no, no, no. It, just, it was just a place where everybody went that wanted to to go fishing or go fishing or do whatever. And where on the, the afternoon. Was Pine Bluffs, right next Pine to uh, to uh, Bud and Myrtle. Oh. More. Okay. Yeah. So we spent many years there, and then. And Liz Alexander lives next door to Moore's. Oh, okay. Right. Oh, okay. So yeah. all your growing up years, you already had this cottage. Correct. Right. Okay. Right. And then when, well, when when my brother Harold died, uh, we sort of, uh, well, there was not much interest in it, so uh, we we sold it. Oh. And uh, and I don't know when that was. I can't remember. Dates. Not not too long ago was like fifteen years. Yeah. Or yeah. Or twenty. That's not too long ago. Well, <laughs> it's quite some time ago. Yeah. So you enjoy the lake. Oh yeah, very much. Did you? Did your family have a motorboat then? You had the oh, car? we we always had some kind of a boat with around the motor uh, on it. with a motor on it. Yeah, yeah. But. Uh, well, I can recall it very well. Of course, uh, my brother Art uh, drowned there with uh, two other people, two friends, on uh, November 14th, 1942. And uh, I remember my dad, and I, of course, I was the, well, my brother Ken was went in the service in 43. At early 43 and uh, so my dad and I would I know they never found they never found Art's body uh, but we had we would walk the shores of the lake mm. until the until the ice uh, got on always looking always always looking yeah and uh, they found the other two they found the two other gentlemen but they never found well, when was he? Like 1415? 1415, yeah. Yeah. Ernie Deacon. Mm -hmm. Tragedy for the family. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Didn't you, yeah. did you ever help your pa and did you and your brothers cut ice in the winter? Oh, I, did, I was not old enough to cut the ice, but I would go down. With them? Go with them to, yeah. Cut ice and when they hauled it. Because they have a ice we had, house. We had a big ice house. Here, where that where that shop stands now, big barn, and uh, yeah, they would cut ice and with a sleigh and haul it up, horse and one? horse and sleigh, yeah. And mm -hmm. these trees, this is a sort of an interesting thing. I don't know. I saw the syntax here. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> uh, when Ralph was about what were you, 13 years old? You worked at the yeah, nursery. Yeah. Yeah. Higgins Lake Nursery at the North End. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And with the CCC, and that's where they used to grow seedlings and stuff. And they gave him ten these ten thousand Norway seedlings. And what were they? Oh, they were, when we planted more than that here, and with, well, the expressway went through. Well, yeah, you know, we we used to own that up to you to Gulix. And they uh, was awful, and and they planted. That's why they're so close together because they were about an inch high. Well, we had a lot, and we had to plant a plant. No, they were no more than an inch high. They were more than an inch. Oh yes. Oh, of were, course, you weren't. No, you weren't around then, were you? No, no. Years they old. were. They were six years old. Those plants oh, were. They were. Oh, they were. Sure. They were like that. Way your ma said that they were. Just no, 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 tiny, no, no, tiny, no, 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 no. You planted them by hand. Oh, sure. <laughs> with a with a, a thing they call a dibble, stick it in the ground and. Kind of looks like an ice butter. Yeah, mm -hmm. looks just like an ice butter, about three inches wide and blade on about that long. Hand the blade is the old blade is about maybe eight ten inches 
long by, by about three inches wide and a uh, half inch thick. And of course it was sharpened. And then you'd jab that in the ground and work it back and forth and stick the tree in and stomp it down. How many of them? It must have been a good year because they sure didn't die. Was oh, they, they grew. Are they all red pines? That you mm -hmm. All red pine. All red. Yeah. Too bad they weren't yeah. blue spruce. <laughs> Well, that was quite an undertaking. Now, have you harvested a lot of that or no? Just where we wanted to move stuff. Yeah. You know, to Never build this house and dig out a hole. To... That's the only time we've cut any down. When we were, well, just before my brother, Ken, and, and we built his house and this house at the, about the same time. Mm -hmm. And we, uh, my dad had 40 acres over where, uh, well, you know where Jim Witt is now? Lives. Crossing the Jerry Garish Park. What's the name? No, it's not across the Garish Park. It's, uh, uh, let me see. East Chickens Lake Drive. Yeah, you know where the uh, corner is when you go over a dead man's curve? Oh, used to there. That, that light, that substation there? Right next to that, there's a farm. Dave Moore used to own that. And then the net, there's another 40 acres next to that that uh, coming might, south? might uh, coming south. Where Ames Ryan Stables used to be? Yeah, that, well, yes, right, that yeah. Was, uh, uh, that was, used to be Dave Moore's farm. old painter farm there. Oh, okay. And the so 40 acres south of that, south of that uh, had a bunch of uh, red pine trees on it like that, just Almost, almost first growth. Yeah, it's some of them were really, really like good sized trees, two and a half like uh, some of them thirty inch uh, diameter. And we spent one winter, my dad and Harold and Kenny and myself, cutting those trees and hauling them over to Joe Mallinger's to have them cut them up. And that was the lumber that we used to build our. Our, our houses. houses How many houses did you build from those trees? Two. Oh, it was beautiful lumber. Beautiful lumber. Was it all yeah. cut then, or was some of it left? Uh, there was some of it left, mm -hmm. yeah. Is it still there? Uh, as a matter of fact... Who bought that property? Bob bought it from your dad. Or? Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, that, they might have split it up. There's a, there are several, lots of houses in there now, oh. and that's where Jim Witt, uh, Jim, and we just cut some, we just cut some wood for Jim's automotive down. Okay, I'm thinking of the wrong person. Okay, Jim the, Witt. The painter, the car, 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 car painter, painter car man. whatever yeah. he does, yeah. Oh, okay, well that was quite a project. Your father owned that for quite a while then, that acreage? Quite a while, yeah. yeah. But there were still some trees on it because that's what we just, we had cut some stuff up for Jim Witt for, a, he's got to build a mammoth barn over there that he keeps his restored cars and stuff in and and uh, we cut some, some of that same stuff that he had cut down to uh, put a floor in his, he's going to use that for a floor in his. Barn. Oh really? I, I haven't seen it, but I guess it's a beautiful place. It's got a fireplace in it. That yeah, I there. understand. This barn is. Lovely. I got to get over there and see it. Uh -huh. yeah. He is a worker. Oh, I know. Gosh. He weighs about twenty-two pounds. Yeah. <laughs> I guess. Yeah. Well, you He's had a good, a good bringing up here. What do you remember from your teachers when you went to school here? <laughs> <laughs> well, let me see. What can I tell you about their teachers? Uh, one of my I teachers. Know that. One of my teachers was uh, Bill Engelson. Oh, really? Yep. What did he teach? Um, yeah, Bill taught me how to fence. English. Uh, <laughs> did he teach English in high school? In I guess he did. High? Yeah. Yeah, it was junior high that I. Mm -hmm. I'm trying had to. Him, yeah. I'm trying to make a point with him for an interview also. Oh yeah. Oh, he'd yeah. be a. Bill would be a good one. Yeah. I hope to hit him. He still. He still got. Has good memories. Getting together. Yeah. Oh, he's 
Yeah. Bill is a great friend. Were you involved in sports? Oh, in yes. School? Oh, yes. Tell yeah. Uh, lots of sports. Of course, at the time I was going in high school, it was the early part of the war, and uh, we didn't have enough enough uh, boys in in uh, school to play eleven man football. So we had six man football teams. <laughs> well, all the schools all did it here at that time. Yeah, the really? the smaller schools. Yeah, and of course played basketball. Basketball was the was the main sport here. I uh, think this community has always supported basketball. Uh, mm -hmm. When I, uh, uh, Earl Haight came to town in 1941, so I had Earl as a, as a teacher and coach in the eighth, I guess it was probably the eighth grade, and then he went in the service. So we didn't have a coach, but we recruited Bill Granlin Sr. To coach us, and Bill was the he had coached the the independent the basketball teams that were out of school here. No, that didn't make any difference. He was a he was a lot better coach than Earl, and uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, Bill Bill coached basketball for for several years. Well. Probably, oh, we'd go to Alpena, Gaylord, uh, McBain, Fairview. Uh, West Branch, Fairview, uh, Holt Lake and Grayling. I don't think we we never got as far as as Taos during those years. Alpena was a long. Alpena was, uh, I just recall that because we had two, we had two, uh, somebody had scheduled two games the same night, so half of us went to Alpena and the other half went someplace else. I, nope. And I can't remember the, but I remember we played uh, whatever school McDougal went to, St. Anne's or St. Francis. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> what other entertainment did you, uh, when you were in high school, like, did you go to the theater frequently? Or? The, that's about all there was to do, Carol, is that? the local movie. Mm -hmm. was about, well, I had a... Did the school have dances? They had a pool hall, didn't they? Dance. Mm -hmm. They didn't put in any of those dopes dance. <laughs> 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 was there a band? Did the high school have a band at that time? Uh, uh, well. Sort of. Sort of. Mary Lockery was the was band the teacher. band teacher. No yeah. Oh yeah. Mary was great. Have you have you talked to her? I just Annie? spent time with her in Florida. Did you? Oh yeah. Um, oh, she can tell you a lot about Ross Common. You just said something that made me think of something. No, I can't remember that. Mm. Yeah, I can remember when the. Theater opened. Oh, really? When yeah. it first opened? When it first opened, I and remember the first, I remember the first, first time, you ever time I ever went there, yeah. Oh, tell us about that. Yeah. Well, Ralph Skagerberg and <laughs> somebody else and I rode our bicycles to town. Oh, Bruce Freeman, it was his theater. Yeah. I don't think he let us in free. I think we had. No, I think we had a pet. Well, Bruce was. I know Pike Peterson never let no, you in free. No, he never let you in free. No. Do you recall uh, how much you had to pay? Oh, might have been a dime. Dime. I was thinking. I was going to say we have some old ticket that say fourteen cents, but I don't know really? yeah. what it was. That that it could have been. Yeah. I, I don't know what year yeah. they were. I remember yeah. when I was growing up, we didn't have a theater in our town. We used to go to neighboring towns, and when I was small, I remember it was a dime. And every Christmas, Bruce would, uh, well, maybe even Pike, too, when he bought it, but Bruce would, uh, school would get out, everybody go to the, would go to a Christmas movie. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, really? Well, that's nice. 
So it was a movie with a Christmas theme, also like Scrooge or something? Or yeah, something. yeah. Great. Yeah. Well, how progressive. How did your family celebrate the holidays? Well, they used to go to the movies a lot. Oh, yeah, we used to go to Grayling to the movies. Oh, did you? Yeah. When I, as a matter of fact, yeah, before this movie was was built, yeah, we used to, oh, once a month, probably once a month, we... When did, how early, did you, geez, I can't, when did your family have a car? By the time you were... I can always, I can always remember always a car, a yeah. Car. Yeah, the first car I can remember is... Had a car forever, didn't he? Yeah, 29, a 29 Chevy Coupe. That's what Harold had. Indeed. And then we had a, oh, about a 32 uh, Pontiac, I guess it was. On the, an old square job. Yeah. I have to tell you but, something funny. that The night before Ralph was born, he was born the 3rd of July, and they went to the movies that night. Mom and Dad? Mom and Dad, and I presume Kenny. Okay. And me. Well, but you weren't born Well, I went. And I was there. Edna, uh, you know, the, whoever was around. And when they got home, they had bought a watermelon somewhere along the road. And they had watermelon before they went to bed. And before morning, Ma was sick as a dog, and she had Ralph. Oh my and Ralph, has, he's the only human being I know that can't even stand the smell of watermelon. Oh, and we always say, <laughs> he hates Hate it. watermelon. I hate watermelon. He, in fact, when I buy water, I don't dare put it in the refrigerator because he can't stand the smell of it. Oh, isn't that, isn't that yes. funny? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Uh, we always thought that that's probably why he doesn't like watermelon. Yeah. His mom got sick on it. Sure. Okay, now you didn't have any grandparents here because your grandparents were all in Sweden. Is that right? No, Grandpa Pete. No, Grandpa, Grandpa Pete, my so mother's dad, lived with, lived with us. He, he immigrated when, they, when she did? Is she, uh, different times. Well, did he come later? <sighs> he must have come. To, uh, to uh, Roscommon? Go to America from Sweden. Oh. She said she, she was an immigrant, and so was he. Did he go to Minnesota or to Chicago? I, I don't know. I can't remember that either. I don't know. I just wondered. It. I think I he wondered. came first, you know, over first. Earlier. Mm hmm But I don't think he had a great deal of contact with the kid. No, there was, um, there was sort of a... Not until somebody I, had to take care of. I don't... And... I don't know, I probably nobody was interested, but Ma never said anything about, no. you know, she was always willing to take care of him and do everything for him, but, you know. Well, see, that was in the days when, when you were immigrants, you didn't want your kids to look like immigrants or be like immigrants, or she didn't want them to speak Swedish and, at home. And Did she, your parents speak Swedish? Oh, was, yeah. They, in fact, they spoke it all the time between them, but they... Yeah. Didn't Did you learn it? Just something. They didn't, well, yeah, you know, well, enough to happen? understand a little bit about the, the, you know, the tone of the conversation, but not to, not to. Uh, but she and Mrs. Soderholm used to get on the phone and hang on there all afternoon, and they both spoke Swedish all the Did your older oh. brothers oh, yeah. learn the language? No. Nope. Not any better. No. No. Nope. Carol was nope. very quiet and unaggressive and not the kind of a kid that would. You know, well, the parents must not have but they didn't, though. right, they didn't, uh, that was the time, as Tila said, when it wasn't, uh, it just wasn't the thing to, to do with, you, the, you were here, to, it, it was, it was English, and, and uh, you know, and that's what you better mother, learn. Ralph's mother was a very bright lady, very well-read. Oh, yeah, she used to read a lot. And she was, and she was yeah. smart, just had... In great character. Well, they speak highly of her at our church. You know, the, oh, yeah. Well, everything yeah. from that, that's how much they really, she and a few others were. The oh, yeah, they, well, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
she and Ogrens and <laughs> held the held the church together when there was when she they were the only ones that were going. Oh yeah. You know, yeah. Now Mrs. Soderholm and Mrs. Ogren were all real kind of laid back, sweet <laughs> ladies who did whatever their husband said or whatever. But grandma grandma was the more independent. Boy oh boy. She was Oh yeah. Matriarch, was she? Oh yes, yes indeed. She. Was, I used to laugh after Iron got the store. This is of course in the fifties. She'd get her housework done in the morning. She liked to go. She liked to get. Oh yeah. But she always got her work done in the morning and all everything done. She'd want to go to town to do her Saturday afternoon shopping. And. If Harold wasn't around, he was probably with Pa doing carpenter work. And she'd call up Arv downtown at the store. Now we're talking Saturday afternoon, they're busy. Mm -hmm. And she'd say, I'm ready. <laughs> and he'd probably start to say something, and she'd down and go to the phone. She didn't say goodbye or anything. And somebody would come I'm after her. Go after her. Get her. Oh, yeah. uh, I'm ready. Uh -huh. Yeah. No matter yes. if you're ready or. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but she no, was, oh, Vilma. Mm -hmm. She was. When she always had. She one had of it, it was just well, like she. The first night I ever had a date with Ralph, he came and picked me up and said, I have to go. I have to go take my mother home. And she was down to Carrie Shirey's at an auxiliary meeting. And I'm sitting in the car, and he went in, and he's helping this little old lady out who's crippled. And, you know, I'm expecting to see some woman in her 40s or 50s. And, and, uh, and well, I, she was crippled since she was 35. I know, it, and I couldn't believe how, I mean, I mean, she didn't look that old to me after that. I mean, she had a rather youth, her hair wasn't all that gray or anything. <laughs> But that night, I can remember her coming out of them and hit him having a hold of her, and I thought, my Lord, this woman is old. I th yeah. <laughs> Does she have arthritis? Oh, arthritis? terrible. When I, was a, when I was a kid going out, I can't rem can never remember coming in at night with her not being awake. Oh, no, she was always awake when the kids came in. Yeah. Uh -huh. in, uh, Did your father have the arthritis also? Uh-uh. No, not at nope. all. He, yeah, he, he was running around up on oh, his yeah. rafters till he, he died, and he was seventy-five when yeah. he died. Oh, oh yeah, so that's yeah, your yeah. Died. She, she, in fact, <laughs> you could hear her through the whole house because she had well, had she had one foot, 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 foot that she couldn't put down on the floor. You know, the heel was up, yeah. up like that, and, and yeah, boom, boom, boom. But you all could, this, you could tell when Ma was up. George Skagg. And I, now I don't know about Red, but George and Pinky, Pinky was a, almost an invalid with, I remember. Oh, yeah. with arthritis. Yeah. Uh, Kenny went through periods where he couldn't function. Uh, George Skaggs all crippled up like a gnarly old knot. So it, ha it was all on her. It was side. in her, yeah. And pa, Grandpa Pete was all crippled up. Well, Ed, Ed Ralph's uh, dad. Was he too? Was, yeah. Her brother. Be Uncle her Carl? brother. Between that and, and uh, he was get, was gassed, gassed in the war. war yeah. And, uh, yeah, Carl was the same way. They all, they were all. Now, how about Sig? I don't know. She died in her 60s, so I really Part don't know. We had this Aunt, Aunt Sig from Chicago. Sigrid Johnson from Chicago. Her husband was a, was a fireman. Mm -hmm. In Chicago for the years, yeah, mm -hmm. and they used to come up every summer and go camping at the camping at the uh, South State Park. Yeah. And that was always a big thing. That for years and years they did that. We used to go down there with them. Yeah. Guess that was a, that was a lot of fun. Uh, she was just a great lady. One year they had, I think it was Dorothy Hale, who had six two kids. Yeah. This is before you were around, I think. 
I don't think you were even born yet, but they had a couple of kids from, um, she had all these relatives that lived out in Washington and moved to Washington State. Who did? Uh, Grandma Othling. She had okay. a brother. Two, two sisters. sisters. Anyway, the bunch of them were here visiting, and it's like July month and hotter than the blazes, and all those kids got smallpox. Mm. And apparently they're all laying around. Yeah, that was a baby. And I know Vivian was a baby because they thought she was going to die. Yeah. That was one of Ralph's cousins from out there. See, Oscar and... Uh, or, uh, they would have talked about that for years. Yeah. Oh, I can just imagine. Now, See, they lived, here for, they lived here for a couple of years. Who did? Olga and... Uh, Carl? No, what was no, her husband's was name? name? What was his name? Bob. Uh, Bob Crummy, yeah. Mm -hmm. And Mary Marie Smith was in Washington. That's another sister? Yeah. I never knew her. She had a bunch of them. Uh, Grandma was always of sort of the opinion that most of these men that her sisters married were not very ambitious. I always got that feeling. Of course, there are none of them like Pa. I mean, yeah. when you have somebody like Ralstad, it's, it's pretty hard to <laughs> compare yeah, to. Uh, to him. You spoke a little bit about your mother liking to travel. Did they? Did she go back to Chicago to see? Sure. Uh, was that a? Well, it wasn't. It wasn't often, but they would go back. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, they would go back she to. Told me about when she would go and take some of the kids, whoever. Oh yeah. Hanging on her skirts, I suppose, and go stay with Sig, and Pa would stay home and take care of the rest of them. Yeah. And they and they went to the. Well, West. I remember begging her to go. Begging Do you remember? Oh, yeah. They went and they, of course they went on the train. Um, they went to the World's Fair in nineteen was it nineteen thirty five? Thirty four. Thirty four. Thirty three. Thirty four. Yep. Yeah. Well, anyway, yeah. Ralph was a little guy. Yep. And he got lost. I got lost. Oh, and I said, I well, lost you at the fair. And he said, of course you I can. I, you bet I can. Yeah. How long were you lost, Ralph? Oh, maybe. Five minutes, it seemed like five days. Well, it must have been longer than that because they talk about looking for you. Oh, well, yeah, well, I mean, that does a little bit of time, you know. Seems a long time. A lot of time goes <laughs> quickly. <laughs> yeah. I said, Are you sure she did deliberately? <laughs> I remember distinctly, I was riding on, I, I'd never seen an escalator before. Oh, gosh, no, I suppose And not. I jumped on that escalator and, and I was gone. I looked around. Yeah, I didn't see him. Didn't see him. <laughs> uh, oh God, I can imagine recently. me at that age. If somebody lost me in the backyard, I'd have been <laughs> hysterical. Yeah. Oh gosh. Well, let's, yeah. Look, yeah. let's get a little bit of your connection to Russ Common. And did you not come? You dated well here. Yeah, the first time I ever came, I came to visit my father and my stepmother, who had just got married that summer, and that was the summer of 43. Okay, so you were still a teenager. Yes, and I was... Did you stay the whole summer? No, oh no, I didn't even, I beg your pardon, it wasn't even the summer. They got married in the summer. I came the night before hunting season on the bus, oh. on oh. the Greyhound bus. From where? From, well, I... Vermontville? I came from Lansing, actually. Oh, okay. I had, I don't know how I got to Lansing. But I stayed night over with my aunt and uncle in Lansing, who took me to the bus in the morning. And I remember it was a, oh snow up to the moon. It was so I couldn't believe the snow. And of course that was. What year did the fire burn? What did the did the did the did the store burn? What store? The block, the A and P store block there. Forty before I came. Oh, that was in for, that. That was in. Because that was. Do you remember that fire? That was in. Oh, oh yeah. I think that was in '42, and it was New Year's. If I'm not, because that's the year that I, well I worked in the, yep, worked in the gas station. And that was in the the 14th of November was when Art. Ground in '42. In '42, and I was working, and then the that whole block burned. The A and P store and mm -hmm. 
of the barber shop and But see, there were everything. no remains of that when I came. No. You worked for the gas station that was connected to the Rutley's. The Rutley's Brothers, yeah. Yeah, but it was where... Um, where the bean hopper is now. Yep. No, 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 no. It was the, where the it was where the card shop is, where next to Fritz Bertel's old garage. Thela, I'm talking about I'm talking about the four corners of town, okay. and the the gas station was where our store was. Well, okay. When did you work in the one that was when when I that came was in? after that. Okay. That was after it burned down. The Rutledge boys went down to Carl Carlson's. Oh, okay. Hardware. Because I didn't. I thought that no. that uh, no. when we were married, that they, somebody was building a gas station on the corner there. Then I don't remember who, the hardware store and yeah, that was the Gamble store. That was another right. That was another. That time. was the second time around. Third time around. First okay. time it was Bruce Rutledge had a because hardware when store. When I first came here, that I can remember that night we pulled into there. When whoever picked me up at the bus garage. Where was the bus garage? That was on the corner where the Ford garage, the old Ford, Ford garage. garage. Oh, that's where Impact, the, yeah. That's where the Greyhound bus stopped. And my stepmother, when they, whoever picked me up, they went over to this little ramshackle gas station and got gas. And it was like a sh little shanty there with a couple of gas pumps stuck out by the sidewalk. Well, it wasn't a sidewalk, but it was, you, you pulled in and it only had one, one, uh, Did you put, was it diagonal? No. No, oh, you got the wrong town. It was across the street from Jimmy Nibb's gas station. Okay. Yes, yes, so that's Carl said, Carlson's and there was a gas pump there. Okay. But we're not talking about that. No, all right. So anyway, this other stuff was, do you remember, did you go into town see the fire? Do you remember the actual fire, or you just saw the uh, remains? I, that, no, I remember the fire. Do you remember? Yeah, yeah. What do you, what, yeah. Do you have any picture of that fire? What started Don't you? that? Does anybody know? Well, it's probably you can find it in the newspaper, but... I couldn't find it. Couldn't you? No, I tried to find it for the calendar we did last, the 2000 calendar, and I couldn't find a picture of it in the paper. I went through all the papers. Isn't that odd? Huh. Well, what time of day was it? I would picture, know. Night. In the night? In the night. Pictures of the remains after the fire, but not pictures not of the Not during the actual fire. Mm -hmm. Well, it could be everybody was too busy. Mm -hmm. Isn't that strange? So you had worked there, so then you were out of a job. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you were, you were already like Right, well, it was just... 13, 14, yeah. that was just something. Oh, right, yeah. Yeah. Well, it wasn't out of a job because, when, well, when the Rutledge brothers didn't take long to move down to, to they bought Carl, Carl Carlson's, Carlson's place, and uh, so I went, I worked there, yeah, yeah, yeah. during hunting season. And, very industrious. Well, tell us what yeah. you remember about hunting season. We have heard all these marvelous stories. <laughs> oh, wow. Did you hunt? What kind of story do you want to hear? Oh, off and on, yeah. Yeah, I did. But, so oh, it was a hunting season in Roscommon was wild and quite an event. Quite an event. Oh, you can't yep. imagine the people. Just people and and uh, they're probably at that time. Oh, let me see. I can count. I don't know there weren't that many bars. I guess. Oh, there were a lot of them. Five or six, maybe, scattered around. Oh, but, well, that's the thing that when I came here. I heard about Jesse Green raffling off oxen oh. during season. Do you remember that? <laughs> no, but I'm sure that and Jesse Sloan Green raffled off Sloan. more than oxen, yeah. <laughs> Salon told us, well, that she always lived right there in town, that, that it was an ordinary thing for everyone to take hunters in and give them room and board. Oh, yeah. Yeah, else mother oh, did. Sure. Way out here? Sure. sure. Oh, yeah. She had the same group who would come. She had a guy from Chicago. Yeah. That she didn't we, know. I mean, well, they, know they didn't know. Back, them. I, they, once they no, came, they, they came every year. Yeah. Isn't that amazing? Oh, yeah. They would, well, a lot of people around. I, I loved him because he had been in the submarine service in World War One. God, Thela, I can't. You remember that? He had white hair? Yeah, but, yeah, I can't. Oh, I was intrigued by this old guy. 
And he might have been he might have been a relative no, he of somebody that you know that oh. heard of Roscommon, you know, and yeah, and but said. Well, they all came by car by then. Oh yeah. But see, you know, another thing that happened. My dad, who, as I said, started coming here in the twenties. Even when my mother, he and my mother were still married. And in fact, I think she came here once. My grandmother said she remembers that she came here once. And they would come up and rent a room from somebody and hunt. And, and then they would invite, they'd get to know people. My dad got to know a lot of people in the bar. Well, he is a good friend of Hershey Campbell's. I don't know if you remember Hershey. No, you wouldn't. No. Well, he, then these guys that came from down in the farm country would invite guys down there to hunt pheasants. Yeah. And oh, so, so it was sort of a, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you got to know, know more guys. I remember they, we had a guy that came every, or my dad and Alice had some guy, his name was Dr. McGurk, who came from somewhere Royal Oak or someplace, and then Harry Bradley, the car guy. Now, my dad didn't know them before hunting. Isn't that something? Well, Vic Anderson used to have, oh, probably a half a dozen of them bunk at, no, at yeah. uh, his place. Yeah. Sure. Well, that had to be a wonderful time. That people well, just opened up the time. It was. Oh, I yeah. I started to yeah. say, the first night I came here, my, well, I came from this little town that didn't even have a bar. I had a bar that closed at 10 o'clock at night, you know, that sold beer and wine. That was it. Um, not that that was any big thing, but when I came into this town in, in the night before hunting season, and my folks took me to the Colonial and to the Roscommon Hotel and to Jess Green's, and they had all these neon lights and all this glitter and glitz, I thought I was in Hollywood, believe me. No kidding. I'm 14 years old, and I'm thinking I'm in the, <laughs> at the Ritz USA. Yeah. Oh, man, a lie. And they were dancing in the dance hall in the Colonial, and... Used so to have the, I'm used to playing dominoes every night. <laughs> have the Hunter's Ball. Oh, yes. That was, at, they that? at the high school. High school. That was a big oh. In the gym. No kidding. That, you know where the old, uh, the, the an old, old first gym, that little one? Yeah. That's, where I, that's where I moved my shop in when I, yeah. when I, when I moved from. That's how I got out of that warehouse. That's how so I got out of it. Into, into the new gym. Yeah. Or the old gym. The old the gym, gym was built. when that new yeah. gym was built. Oh. Yeah. They used to have the hunter's ball there, and you couldn't get in. And the women it was all just wore formals, and I mean, you, we had corsages. And yeah, it was a live band and all. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And the first yeah. time I went yeah. to the hunter's ball, <laughs> I had see now getting to know Ralph was a whole different story, because my cool. we should insert that Coincident <laughs> coincidentally, I Gene Rutledge and I. Met and she became my college roommate at, or I became her. Jean Rutledge. Jean Rutledge's come sister. Here. Maggie, okay. here, come here. Only she was a junior and I was a freshman. Did you take my doggy? So. Uh, what did you say? Yes. Oh, at, yes. From, from yes. 13 to 17 is a big shot. You know, you're, you're like you're a good dog. Like 13, She's a good dog, yes, yeah, she was. Or not much. I just knew if they could dance or if they couldn't, and that was the main thing. But in the meantime, getting to know her that summer, I came up that summer and visited, and I got to know her, and that's when we made arrangements that we were going to room together and all this, which we did. Uh, I was with her when I met Ralph. Jokey. And we got engaged the following year. But that year for the Hunter's Ball, I came up hunting season. Of course, I had my folks here. I could stay with them. I didn't live with them, but I stayed with them because I lived with my grandparents. Uh, I came up and we were, I'm trying to make, get Ralph to learn to dance. Mm -hmm. Well, he doesn't want any of that dancing stuff. And, uh, and, Maggie. and we were not engaged or anything at that time. We were going together. And Kenny, his brother, was a good dancer. I'd heard everybody say, oh, Kenny was really a oh, knockout yeah. dancer. So we're, uh, Ralph had invited me out here one night for dinner and we were having dinner and Kenny's saying, um, uh, I suppose you're going to the Hunter's Ball. No, I'm not going to the Hunter's Ball. And Ralph says, what do I want to go to the Hunter's Ball or something like that, you know? Kenny says, 
Well, he's half mad at him. He said, I can't believe you aren't going to take her to the hunter's ball. Well, I'm not, so there. Huh. So Kenny says to me, how about going with me? <laughs> and well, did I, you? No, I didn't. But in hmm. the meantime, two nights later, you came into Allison, my dad's house, and we put the records on, and you learned to dance in a very short time. Really? Night. Yes. In a very short time. And he's a good dancer. Well, I don't remember me. that. You don't remember and that? did you get to go to the Hunter's Ball that year then? Yes. All right, Ralph. So well, with, with me? Yes. Oh, right you well. went. See, I, all can't those, believe, I can't believe it. Oh, you, we did. All those boys, and believe. he and Skip Diss, and those boys of that particular age, I don't know what got into them, but they all thought dancing was kind of sissy. It was. Like, not they macho football. It right. was, no, yeah, whatever. yeah. But uh, yeah. now the older guys were good dancers. Jim Rutledge and Lawton Knapp and, and Kenny and all the Sherman boys, they were really good dancers. <coughs> so the Summer's Ball, then, like... Did your mother, did your dad and stepmother go to? Did everybody go? Well, they or probably they intended to, but they probably got, they gave a cocktail party and never got there. But they, yeah, the people that age everybody, went, oh, yeah. sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Stu and, Stu and Lily Rutledge would be there. And but now these hunters didn't have any dates with them up here to go hunt. Did they go to the hunter's ball anyway? Who? The hunters. Oh, hell yes, they went hey. to pick up girls. Oh, my God. Sure. <laughs> of course. It's a great time. Oh yeah! Oh my gosh! Yes, they go in their hunting uniforms, well, and everybody else. Is but to see, it, oh yeah, sure, oh, absolutely. And the rest of us are all dressed up. Like those, that. those were the years when, <coughs> when they went out. Hunters went and stayed with people, but they also brought tents and went out in the woods and oh, sure. pitched a tent. Oh yeah, lots of them. Yeah. No, oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. You see a lot of pictures. So do you think they, were there more deer then? Nope. I don't think so. No. No. Lots more deer now. Then, then you you had to hunt for deer. But the thing there were a lot of deer, but there were also a lot of hunters. But the thing was, then there were no deer downstate like there are now. No. See, the deer moved in all over. Oh yeah, state. the hunters would. That's why they came up here. Because yeah. there weren't any. Yeah. North of Clare, or I mean south of Clare. Gee, no. Well, that's that is a wonderful little piece of history. <laughs> the the hunters ball. Well, you must have found. Well, stuff. they must have done that for quite a long time. Oh, while. Seven when did years. that start to, to dwindle? Oh, that dwindled. Uh, uh, there was nothing like that when we came here. In the what? No, I was wondering if you saw anything about it. They advertised it in the paper, and you know, you'd buy tickets ahead of times. You know, it might have been. Might have been around the last of the forties. I remember going to it the night when Kurt was a baby, because yeah, well, that have been Pa said you go. He said, "See, look, I had a terrible time with that kid. Uh, you go, you get dressed, and you get could ready, be. and you and Ralphie go to that. It and could you be. won the you won the door prize, the waiting boots. Do you remember that? The waiters. I remember the waiters, but I don't remember being there. Well." You were there. That's, that's what they called denial. I don't remember being there. Oh, but. Well, we need to insert about your son. We didn't hear Kurt. Him. Yeah. Tell us oh, Kurt. Well, Kurt came along in 1952. Yeah, I was pregnant for him when, okay. when Ralph came here to teach. Oh. Right. He was born that September. Yep. And you have how many grandchildren? Uh, two. 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 So he, and all, this is home to Kurt, then, for sure. Well, he, oh, yeah. Kurt, uh, yeah, I went through school here. In, he went to Kalamazoo College, yeah. graduated there, and in, went to work for Pabst Brewing Company in 1950, no, 1974. Four. Four? Or five. When did he graduate? 74? Mm-hmm. 75. And he worked for several different uh, companies after that, and he now has a golf course in Lansing. No, nope. he's Lansing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, that's, I so he, wanted to touch on that, too, because of the RKO um, oh, driving range. Yeah. What was your family's connection with the golf course? That was the driving range that my brother Kenny and I started in 1963, 62, 63. Yeah, kids were little. They all worked. Yeah. We figured we had built-in sleep labor. And uh, so we ran that for So was that, well. when you 
was that still the part of the 40 acres that your dad bought originally? That, no, was, no. A, that was another uh, piece another that parcel? my brother and I bought. They just bought it. And we bought it from uh, people that owned it. Bessie Ford. You bought it just to make the driving range. Right, We're right. talking about the driving range that was on County Road 100, um, a little bit west and across from EO Country Club. Yes. That's right, that's the one. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. How many years did you run that? Well, let me see. We We're didn't run it. Were you we <laughs> not connected with EO Country Club then directly? No. No, no connection? No all? connection. Okay. No. You must have cooperated no. with them, though. Oh, right, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. right, right. That's really the re reason that we initially uh, built the the uh, driving range because of the of the golf course. We, yeah. There first. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah that, and the two yeah, of them didn't have enough to do. <laughs> Ralph and Kenny. <laughs> yeah. Well, we ran that. Of course, uh, Kenny did most of it when when he was alive, and then uh, the Mary Jane and Carol and and Jimmy, the kids. And, the, and Jim's boys worked there oh. so, uh, some. But when they got to be bigger, you know, they didn't care about doing it anymore, so we've just closed it up. Right, but that's uh, not very long ago. Three, that's two or three years ago, yeah. So it went 30 some years. Right, yeah. Did it really? Yeah. Yeah, I guess it did. Yeah. Hmm. Doesn't seem possible. Well, there any other business ventures that you were involved in? Yeah. Well, we, at one time we owned the, the uh, Burning Oak well, Golf Course. Did. Yeah. Who was we? My brother and myself and uh, Kim. Right, Bob Hess, George Guest, and uh, a fellow named Dale Osborne from Downstate. Oh, we're in that. We we owned that for ten years. Bought it in seventy two and sold it in, in eighty two. Mm hmm. Yeah. Well, you've been quite industrious. Oh, there's another venture that we were in too. What now? That you forgot about. <coughs> is, is it because I want to? I don't know. But at one time, a group of us, Corky Gaylord, <laughs> Doc Oppy. The Myself, I think there were maybe Woody. I think there were ten of us that brought the uh, Herald News from from uh, Dale and, and Ellen Matheson okay. when it was going to the it was rumored that the Houghton Lake Resort was going to buy it, uh -huh. and we wanted a hometown newspaper. So I think it was I think Corky was the yeah. <laughs> instigator of that one. So. so we all threw in a few thousand dollars <laughs> and bought that newspaper. Oh, you know where well, it going. went fine, except that uh, <laughs> we we bought a bunch of new equipment and it just went. Well, it's got well we couldn't <laughs> we couldn't make any money well, out of it. And it's so we just yeah we just uh, sold and well, our interests were we weren't really. <laughs> No. You know, our initial you interest was we don't want the paper to go. We want it to be a last common paper. But yeah. well, it ended up that uh, that uh, what's his name bought us. Uh, Perberg bought it from, from us. From the ten of you. From yeah, you from were, our whatever our corporation was. We didn't assess ourselves too many times. Though. I don't know. <laughs> Some of them. We Elf took a, a We took a loss. We took a loss. Elf is not a businessman. Oh, I am too. Bad businessman. Yeah. Uh, no. Let me tell you, you mentioned once before you didn't know that my dad had the first canoe livery in this town. Oh, yes, tell us about that. Well, he, my stepmother owned property around different places because her father had been the... Um, Register of Deeds. Register of Deeds. Her Deeds. father, the Michael, Michael Gibbons. Gibbons. And he had bought up property around on tax sales mm -hmm. like they used to do. And uh, she owned a big piece of property out on Lancewood Drive that started about, 
Well, it was included where Lidicotes are, so I don't know where it would. Woody, Woody Lock. Oh, there's probably. How many feet? There might have been a quarter. There might have been a quarter of a mile, thirteen hundred yeah. feet, good, probably. A good long stretch. Woody Lockery owned from the road, from the highway, or whatever you call that, 18, oh, down to where my stepmother owned, and then she owned to wherever the next property was, and I don't know where that was. There was no road down in there then. There's a road down there now, but there wasn't then. Anyway, she got it into her head uh, that my father needed something to do, keep him out of the bar, mainly. <laughs> <laughs> but it didn't work. <laughs> anyway, she she was really hot on this, and she got him. He knew Borchers, who had the canoe delivery and grailing, and I can remember them going up to see him several times, and they got going on my dad starting this canoe delivery. Ernie Borchers, yeah. So he told them, of course then there were no big rules and regulations, I'm sure, about licenses or no. what, I don't know. No. Anyway, he told them what kind of canoes to buy and what kind of paddles to buy and what they had to do to advertise and so on and so on. Well, was this still in the 40s? Yes, this, was, this would have been, well, probably right after Ralph and I were married. Well, maybe before, 46. I think it was just after, it just after the because, war. Yep. Because my dad was in that first canoe race. <laughs> yeah. To Oscoda. Yeah. He and Rep Carlson. He and Rep Carlson. <laughs> oh, wow. You talk about the blind being blind. <laughs> no. Anyway, he, they started this, and, uh, and they bought a <laughs> Jeep, you know, one of those panel Jeeps. Yeah. And <laughs> carrier on got top these of big it. carriers on the top. Well, I was home visiting and, and working that one summer. I worked in the county clerk's office. I was up here visiting. And they'd send me off, off into the hinterlands <laughs> to pick up canoeists. Well, I didn't know where, I could never, I to this day don't know where the Chase Bridge and the, <laughs> all those different bridges are. And they'd send me off in there to pick up, well, and they would just, my dad would raise such hell because I'd get lost. And, Blah, blah, blah. Was it, so was it a successful? No, it was not a successful. <laughs> How many years did they try it? I don't know. but it, it, well, How did Herschel work like it in there? Well, Herschel started his own afterward. Well, but wasn't, wasn't Herschel a part of the... Herschel bought my dad's canoes. That's right. That's my right. My dad sold the property yeah. one night in the yeah. bottle. Yeah, the yeah. Bottle. yeah. right. Uh, <laughs> Or I won't even tell, I probably wouldn't have it wrong, but yeah. some just infatism yeah. yeah. <laughs> to one of his so-called friends. Well, I don't know yeah. how my stepmother didn't divorce him at that point in time, but anyway, they lost that right there on the spot. And he had built a building on there. Uh, yeah. A little So that's little quite place. a ways down from where the canoe livers are now. Oh, yeah. It would be right it's out right around the corner of Lancewood. Uh, that's Lancewood on about across from, right uh, about across from, well, Little Oppies and and yeah. and uh, Corkies. Like that little road wasn't there to them. Didn't go down. But yeah. anyway, he they sold the, the property, and and as I remember it correctly, Hirsch, who was always in the bar too. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, this was a great group of businessmen. Who was this, Herschel? Herschel Campbell. Campbell. He had Campbell's Canoe Delivery, which was the next canoe delivery after my dad's, I think. I don't know if Waters, Al Waters got in there. No. Hirsch was Hirsch the next, was the next He one. bought my dad's canoes. Yeah. He had, but your father had started his first. previous to Campbell? Oh, yeah. Yeah, he was the, Lauren was the first one. He was the first one yeah. in Ross County. To be documented, I tell you. He and, <laughs> he and, uh, I don't think there are too many people alive that know my dad was a... Well, you should have known Rip Carlson. Wild and woolly guy. <laughs> yeah. He, he, Rip was, was uh, Eleanor's and, and uh, Liz's brother, brother. and John and, uh, and, uh, and Jesse. Jesse's brother. Oh. He, Rip, uh, Rip was Owen the, was the Owen Carlson, isn't he? He was, was the like, oldest uh, one. He'd remind you a little bit <laughs> of Jesse even more lackadaisical. 
mean, he was just he the was guy kind that kind was, of the nicest, yeah. easiest going guy. I don't know. Did you just ever was have so a job easy. Well, you was bartender. Oh, you bartended it. Sure, yes, bartender. Well, no bartender. wonder my dad knew him. So <laughs> well, certainly, <laughs> certainly. That <laughs> that was <laughs> it. God. Well, and these guys had great luck in marrying women with money, because <laughs> Rip married a gal from out to the lake who was an only child, and her folks owned, built that restaurant, George and Lottie Collins. Collins. Well, they had he the, the pioneer he log. Owned the log first log cabin company here that Roy D. Witt bought. Before from Roy D. Witt, he bought Roy bought it from him. So his wife, Tilly. Tilly, you know what her name was, Matilda, of yep, course, yep. And, and she was an only child, and my stepmother was an only child, and they were best <laughs> friends, and my step, the two of them would have filled up this room. Yeah, well, the ladies were big, and the boys were wild. <laughs> and the boys were wild. Alice <laughs> Gibbons was a big woman. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah, but was. a strange we're bill. Almost finished. Good. Huh? We're almost Okay, well, just you, every time you think of something, you think of some other wild yeah. thing. Well, I, I, you know, you couldn't write a story about my dad doing the things he did, going in that damn bar and selling that property. Yeah, isn't that something? When he didn't live here all that many years, you said then they moved on. Yeah. They moved to, well, I'm sure that, I'm sure that they had to sell their house. I'm sure they were down and needed to, for him to get busy and get the hell to work. But she still had her job. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I mean, they could spend money faster than any two people <laughs> I ever met in my life. I mean, they could just, uh, you know, my dad would go in the bar and buy everybody drinks and. Can you can you imagine the two of those guys paddling <laughs> down the Asahi yeah. River? Yeah. The, I mean, the, <laughs> the first canoe race. My dad, I figured up the other day, he was forty, and and Rip was about thirty-eight. Yeah. And. <laughs> and they weren't in good shape. Well, I'll tell you but my dad was, they were tough. My dad was oh, in good shape. They were tough, yeah. He used to go in the woods and hunt with, with oh, a yeah. wool shirt on. And oh, yeah. And he was yeah. really tough. He was a, he was a woodsman. He, but yeah. they, when everybody, and it was a joke in town, everybody sure. saying, Do you know Lauren Dean and, 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 Rip, and Rip Carlson are going to go in that canoe lace? Do they know it's so far it is? He said, Take bets, son, if they live through it. Right. And I, we uh. can't figure it out.